Hey guys, Path of Gaming right here right now, bringing you another Papa Pat's lullabies. Today we'll be going over five costs. Azir. Azir calls forth a wall of charging soldiers from behind him, dealing magic damage to and slowing all enemies hit for three seconds. Enemies close to Azir are knocked back, while enemies further away are knocked up for 1.5 seconds. So they reduced the the knockback and the stun. Uh, the the duration of it the damage is, is relatively ir irrelevant uh, I would like just like to mention that his uh, like ultimate ability typically hits the whole board so he's a good morale user but obviously he's he's a five cost but like if you do get a random morello if you have a moral and you don't have a moral user as there is your man um, there's some like positioning tricks that you should be aware of you got to make sure that Azir is facing um, some sort of enemy like across from him, ideally. Or like you don't want him to be, let's say, in the back middle facing the front right. Because like then he'll, he'll ult his ultimate his soldiers won't really hit much. So you should typically try to corner him or like semi-corner him so that he starts attacking and he hits multiple units when he uses his, his ultimate. Um, he's a warlord, keeper, emperor. So as, as for Warlord, that means he's just really good with uh, other Warlords. You can probably play him late game with like uh, Katarina or Nijarvan or Katarina and Trindamir. Uh, warlords, I, I haven't really experimented with them much late late game. Like they're pretty good. They're pretty good as, as six. If you get can get nine uh, injury if you win, um, you can usually, usually play six. Like if you have a chosen Warlord, you play your mid game around that. And then late game, if you can get to level nine, you can drop a few warlord de warlords down, but Azir is the one one of them you want to keep. Uh, Keeper, I guess that it's kind of irrelevant at this point. At this point, having um, like the little keeper buff uh, when it's like when you're at level eight or nine, it doesn't really make or break much. Um, it's nice. It's nice. Uh, it's kind of uh, just you got to make sure your position to get the keeper buff, but at the same time, try to dodge as much area as possible. So that's not the easiest. And Emperor. Emperor is actually really good since he has two soldiers and uh, the soldiers value has gone up tremendously because you can put the soldiers in positions so that uh, Puff the Magic Dragon, uh, Acehole, targets the soldiers, right? And the soldiers don't move. So if you put your composition somewhere like in the middle or in the left or on the right, like not all the way in the, in the corners, and you put a soldier in the corner across from Acehole, well then Acehole will just fire at the soldier. Or if you put a soldier in the front right and you keep leave your comp on the on the like back left well the farthest away from from asol is going to be the soldier so it's really good like you can use azir soldiers you can use a target dummy but it's really good to think about like how can you position something uh and azir is like the prime example with the soldiers how can you position something to make sure that asol doesn't wipe your whole freaking comp listen uh, yeah this is kind of complicated listen punches his target dealing magic damage irrelevant knocking them back sure Knocking them back to the edge, and he stuns them, and then he punches them again. So he stuns all the all the targets that collide with it, and they get a little bit of damage. He got nerfed damage wise, so he really isn't about damage. The only thing that's important is a stun that he stuns for two seconds and three seconds, and also stuns for one second. So it's it's decent CC because he knocks a, a unit back into his comp, and he CCs uh, the unit and the units around it. If the target cannot be pushed back any further, though, that's very important. They are knocked out of the battlefield instead of removing them from combat. If the target is still alive after being punched, these and will dash to them. So, I mean, that should be... So, like, if you don't know how Lee Sin works, he punches a target, he punches it to the corner of the of the, of the the playing field, and then he just punches it out. Uh, there, It doesn't matter if it has a GA, or um, if it can revive from Zillion, or if it has a ZZ Rod. It's just gone. It's just gone off the map, and it, it's not coming back. So that that's really, really cool. Uh, keep that in mind that like Lee Sin is, is one of the ways you can deal with uh, three star Diana three star Lee. Yeah, so if they don't have QSS if they do have QSS It's even more tricky because you got to make sure that uh, Lee Sin just hiding around the, 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 the Battlefield for 10 seconds and then he can punch him out But uh, I, I don't think Lee Sin is that great uh, as you saw Azir had uh, Azir has like a little star He's relatively uh, relatively flexible. You can put him in at nine into several comps Lee Sin I don't think is that strong Perhaps at two star he's okay, but as I mentioned, he has a very special niche, and that is 
if you're running if you're playing against people who have like a specific three star carry like Diana with everything else two star but Diana three star Lee Sin is your man he'll punch her out if you if you can't kill her any other way Orn now Orn uh, obviously you haven't seen italics yet Orn is kind of a kind of a weak the weakest five cost he's more of a four cost uh, his ultimate ability is uh, Orn summons an elemental from behind the farthest enemy to travel towards him. So in the attack speed of enemies hit by 50% for a few seconds. I don't know what a few seconds means. Um, it would be nice if they specify like 2, 3, 4, 5. And dealing magic damage. Again, a uh, great morale user. If the element runs into Orn, he headbutts it, redirecting towards another distant enemy. So it goes like it goes from the farthest and then it goes to another distant enemy. So it, never, it, it doesn't go back. Unless there's another another far one like right next to the unit, it's kind of confusing. But like, imagine if there's a uh, Tristana in one corner and Nidalee in the other corner, it'll run through Tristana and then he'll headbutt it towards Nidalee. If there's Tristana and Nidalee next to each other, he'll it'll run through Tristana and then he'll headbutt it towards Nidalee. So uh, there's some pos positioning tricks you can use for him to actually like hit as many units as possible. The attack speed uh, slow is actually pretty good. Uh, it's the similar as uh, Nasus's attack speed. Attack speed slow. Uh, magic damage is kind of relevant. Doesn't do much except if you have Morello. Even at three star, he doesn't really do much damage. But but the main the main thing, he's a blacksmith, which means if you are ahead, if you have HP to spare, if you are winning, this is like a win more card. As if you know if you know from any card games, like he will help you win more. If you are ahead and you find an Orn. Uh, then you just then you just play him, let him craft some items, and he'll help you get even farther ahead. And the typically the way you play Orn is you play him for four rounds, uh, creep rounds count as well. You play him for four rounds, you get an artifact, and then you use the artifact. And then you you reassess. Okay, can I play this this kind of a? Okay, he's okay in Elderwoods. Obviously, he has an Elderwood tag, so he's he's probably a bit better than Maokai. Uh, he's a Vanguard, but like you don't want to play him with Vanguards. Obviously, Aatrox and Sichuani are much better. So you don't really want to play him for anything else but Blacksmith, perhaps in some Elderwood comps, if you're going for 9 Elders, uh, or potentially 6, but there are better Elderwoods than him. So what you want to do is let, let him craft, let him be a Blacksmith, craft you an artifact, and then reassess if you can still play him. If you can, then, then play him for 4 more rounds. And uh, uh, what you really want to think about is, okay, uh, at what point do I take Orn out? At what point am I going to die? Or at what point like, do I need to make my comp even stronger and not have Orn in there? So Orn is a, is a four cost unit. He's very very weak by by his own on his own, uh, but he helps you win through the artifacts. So just keep that in mind. You you cannot play him like you, if you get to a full legendary comp late game, you don't want to put Orn in as a as a legendary to help you win. You want to like win a round or two. You want to have him there at least for four rounds, and the artifact is going to help you win. As soon as you get an artifact, you dump this guy. Sorry buddy, I know you're 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 kind of grinning at, grinning at me. Uh, you are useless. Once you craft your artifact, you're out of there. Samira. Um, I gave Samira one star. Maybe Samira deserves it in two stars. Uh, she's so, so, so powerful. Samira dashes and becomes unstoppable, unleashing a few shots per second at three enemies within 2.5 hexes for two seconds. Each shot does a position of attack damage for the duration. Samira gains 100% of dodge chance. So at one star, it's three shots per second. At two star, it's four shots per second. Percentage of 80. So yes, it's a little bit lower AD. But uh, you like don't forget that she's also a slayer. So the way it works is, um, sh if she gets lower, she's gonna heal back up. If the targets get lower from her her shots, then uh, what 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 happens is she'll start doing even more damage. And she only has uh, three targets, right? So that's kind of the the cap, right? So she can only hit three targets. Except she's a sharpshooter, so I presume the shots can ricochet. Uh, I, I don't know this. I've tested, I've played with her a lot, and I do think they ricochet because when I when I play another another sharpshooter, she just evaporates like everything in the circle. It's not just it's not just three targets. Uh, but <laughs> it's a complete wipe. Uh, Daredevil is pretty good. Um, it makes her it's kind of like um, kind of like shade, kind of like tumble from Wayne. It's it's similar to it, but not entirely because it do, she doesn't lose aggro. She just moves around, so she's harder to, to target, which is kind of like, like if someone is on her, like if someone is, is range is on her and he and she doesn't like tumble out of or like whatever dash out of range, then uh, she can still get focused. But the, the the moving around is actually pretty good. It keeps her alive. 
And just, just as a reminder, she's unstoppable, unleashing, and 100% uh, dodge. But she gets 7 to magic damage. So if Puffy's playing, he can just snipe her. So be, be careful with that. You should... And also, um, unstoppable before, like while she's ulting, but also she's relatively squishy, so you might want to put a QSS on her. You might want to put, like, what I ran, I had a GA IE Last Whisper, which was completely brutal, and she completely cleared everything. And yeah, the GA was to protect her, and the IE Last Whisper was really good as well to, to, to kill everything. And when she, when she, ultimate, when she went, went into her ultimate, she essentially healed to full, and then she just started pew pewing all around the board. So I think, and she's also a sharpshooter. Um, I think she's phenomenal with Sivir. Phenomenal with Sivir. Sivir's a, like the, as I mentioned on the three cost, Sivir's a team buff kind of, kind of sharpshooter. So uh, Samira will definitely appreciate the team buff or appreciate the attack speed from Sivir. Uh, so yeah, try, try Samira out. If you have any sort of 80 items, she's probably better than, than Talon or Trindomir or a Broloff, like, yeah, she's fantastic. Set. Um, set is definitely something you want to add. Like, right now, since uh, since Kane is gone, Yone got, got nerfed, Set is your, your go-to man. Uh, he's the boss, right? He is the boss. Set grabs his target and slams them forward, dealing percentage of their maximum health and magic, dam and magic damage to them, and a percentage of the slams on his maximum health to all enemies in a large area. So he does, uh, like, a, a, decent, a decent chunk of... of uh, damage the unit grab 40 60 percent and also 20 to 30 percent 20 or 30 percent to all other units and typically it's really good because he picks up a frontline unit right and he slams that into all the other units so if you're able to put some some ap on him um i do uh ideally you have um elwood spat that gives him enough ability power or you just put like a death cap on him jewel gauntlet hand of justice all all of these great things to give him more damage it's really scary when he slams. Also, the boss means that uh, once he gets to 40% HP, he goes to his sit-ups. And if he manages to heal up to 100% health, that's very crucial. He needs to heal all the way up to 100%. Then everything becomes pure, which is completely bonkers because he can just grab anything. And if he has a little bit of magic damage, he'll just do 100% of its health in pure damage. Bye, it's gone. So uh, just like Lee Sin, he, he's good at dealing with uh, three star Diana, three star whatever, whatever your opponent has, three star Z maybe. Uh, whatever your opponent has, he can take out three stars because they have a lot of health. So he can grab the three star and he can slam it and actually kill like other units using the, the three star unit. Uh, he's really, really great about, against Cultus and Galio because Galio has a lot of health. So he'll pick up the, ga like, the Galio himself and slam it into, into his comp to clear everything and damaging Galio quite a lot. So that's really, really powerful. So uh, think about Set next time. Next time you're unsure what legendary put in, uh, put in Set. He, he's he's really worth it. And he's less buggy now. He's less buggy now. Swain. Uh, Swain definitely brings the pain. Um, I, I'm going to say this right now. I, I think right now, as of right now, Swain seems like uh, kind of a mix of uh, Riven and... Um, our uh, friend uh, Kane, right? Because Riven needs defensive items. Kane wanted like have sort of offensive items, but Swain is, is like the perfect combination of both. Swain transformed into his dragon form for six seconds, getting maximum health and dealing magic damage to each second to enemies with, within a few hexes. While in dragon form, every two seconds, Swain views a fire cone in front of him, dealing magic damage, putting enemies for 25% of their maximum health. That's true damage over 10 seconds. So that's like a more of a sunfire effect and reducing healing by 50% for the duration. So damage per second. Uh, yeah, I saw someone play three, three star Swain. It's it's completely busted. Like <laughs> everything just dies around him. But like typically you have one or two star. So if you have two star, uh, this is pretty pretty disgusting on its own. Like it's six seconds. So that's 900 damage. Just just his ultimate thing does 900 damage. Then the cone damage is 350. When he spits his cone, he gets an immense amount of HP. And yeah, the hex range is yeah full board, but typically it's hex range. Um, so what you want, obviously. Obviously, the, the new kind of uh, best synergy or synergy I like to add is Siphoner. So I, used, I, I usually run, I run Swain with Morgana. So uh, he heals up 40% of the damage he does, right? Which is pretty disgusting. Like, if you have some tech items on him, like Titans, uh, like Titans, um, I mean, he can use anything, Bramble, D-Claw, like these, uh, Locket of the, no, not, not, uh, 
stone plate, stone plate, like any of these kind of crappy items that you don't really know what to do with, like they're so good on Swain because you just want him to survive because like his ultimate does a lot of damage. So he doesn't need any damage on him. He just, he's just a big badass Riven. And with Siphoner, he's kind of like, uh, yeah, with Siphoner essentially makes him uh, into uh, Red Cane. So yeah, so he, he heals up. And he's tanky and beefy, so if people can't like actually take him out quickly, then he will out sustain everyone's board. So like at two star, uh, you can run him with with pop the magic dragon for dragon soul. You can run him in, in almost any comp, and he will he will definitely be very useful. Uh, so similar to set, if if like if you if you two star him, he's really good. If you two star set, set is better. Obviously, I would say Swain two star is probably even better than set two star based on your items. Like if you have sort of Ability power damage items, then it's probably set. If you have more of these tanky items, it's Swain. If you have both, then yeah, obviously you have Swain and set. And then Samira is your AD carry, which is the like the one of the comps I ran today, and it was completely bonkers. Like these legendaries that you actually have physical damage carry, magical damage carry, and uh, tank. So that's a really good combo. And last but not least, Yone. Uh, oh, not Yone. <laughs> Sorry, not least. Uh, not last. Uh, Yone is actually kind of, I, I find, I find him a little bit weaker now. I, I find that, that, um, like, yeah, like, like the ability is now Yone strikes long path in front of him, dealing magic damage, spit between all enemies, that's the same, enemies hit are marked for death, reducing their armor and magic resistance by 40%, so it's just 40%, it, it was, it was 80, that was 60, now it's just 40, and Yone's spell is then replaced with Unforgotten until there are no remaining enemies marked for death. Unforgotten is 20 mana, and Yone slashes the lowest health enemy, the lowest health enemy that is marked for death, dealing plus their missing health as magic damage. Yeah, that that's that's wrong. He no longer does uh, missing health as magic damage. Uh, they they didn't change that here, but it's changed. He like it. He only like it scales this, so it's twice as much as this. So it's not like missing health, but it's actually it, it just doubles the or it increases the base damage. So he no longer one shots units that are that are low, and also also what, what they changed is now his ultimate is only eight seconds, like he's they're marked for eight seconds. They're not marked forever. They're only marked for the first eight like for eight seconds. If he doesn't kill them by then, that like if he dies, uh, your team cannot uh, enjoy their their armor and magic reduction forever, right? It's only eight seconds. So he got really gutted. Uh, I still think he is he is uh, one of the go-to legendaries. Like you can add him into comps, but I would say Sway number one, Set number two, Yone number three, Azir number four, something like that, something like that. Like Yone has fallen off. He's still an adept. That's that's nice. Like he's he's cool with Shen and Irelia. He's exile, so he does have that extra HP. Like if he's two star, that's uh, what two point five two point five k HP. It's good enough. It's 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 good enough. Like he he does survive. He has decent health, decent utility. But he is no longer the, the one legendary you just put in and win the game. Which is actually good. Which, like, you can't just, like, luck, uh, roll a lucky Yone on 7 and from there just win the game. So, even a 2-star with, like, decent items, uh, with, like, blue buff titans, maybe blue buff titans, hex stack, like, something like that. Maybe he can still carry a 2-star. But, yeah, he, he, he no longer wipes comp. So, he's, he's balanced. He's in a good spot. You should still play him if you get him. Obviously, if you get him as, as like, an early legendary or 2-star legendary, play him. But uh, don't put all your hopes into, into Yone carrying you, because uh, there are better carries for that. And now, finally, last but not least, Zillion. Zillion is completely insane, guys. Uh, you should really consider playing Zillion whenever you can. Uh, like, he is a mystic. He is a cultist. Like, those are his tags. But even if you have, like, two mystics already, uh, you can add Zillion. Even if you don't need the cultist, you can add Zillion. Because his ultimate is uh, pretty damn powerful. Zivian places a protective time moon on, on the allies with the lowest health over uh, other than himself. So no longer, he cannot revive himself. When they would die, they instead resurrect after a few seconds, returning to combat with some health and shredding all negative effects. So basically GA. After resurrecting, they have bonus attacks before the rest of combat. So at uh, one star, it's two targets. Like the revive delay is kind of irrelevant. Uh, health is, is low attack, attack speed is relatively low. At two star, though, he revives three targets after three seconds. They have 500 HP, so that's 1500 HP, and they have 75% attack speed. Okay, Zeke's got nerfed. 
This is like more than two Zeeks. This is more than two Zeeks, I believe, right now on live. So two stars a million gives you three GAs and two Zeeks. Just, yeah, let that sink in. Three GAs and, and two Zeeks. Like, uh, yeah, essentially, yeah, like three GAs and like six Zeeks or like six, like two Zeeks on, on the units that have a GA. So GA and Zeeks and two Zeeks on each unit, right? A GA and two Zeeks on your uh, low health unit. Obviously, like, yes, if you're running Mystics, if you're running like other units that have low HP, he will revive them first or like put his uh, protective timer on, on them first. But he is completely broken. If you get the, I think it's Mezzantine, the, the own artifact that restores a lot of mana, like 100 mana after after the first cast, I think that's one of his best artifacts. Um, like putting putting any sort of mana on him, if he casts once, it's really good at two star, or even one star is okay, but two star is so good. If he casts twice, it's gonna be very hard for you to lose the fight because like half of your board is gonna revive and then uh, have bonus attack speed. So if you have any sort of healing or if they have some sort of sustain, they revive and they're gonna do a lot more damage because they'll be attacking faster, they'll be casting more, and they're gonna they're gonna clean the opponent's board. So Zillion is also quite splashable. So I'd say Orn is the weakest unless you're able to use him for a few turns and get an artifact. And uh, after that, after that, I guess Azir is, is, is relatively good. Azir is relatively good. Um, Lee Sin is kind of the probably the, the second weakest, right? He's very situational. Apart from that, all the legendaries are actually playable. They're actually pretty good. So we don't have to worry about getting getting shitty, leg shitty legendaries. As long as you're not putting in Orn, as long as you're putting in Lee Sin 1, um, viewer comp will, will be improved by, by uh, random legendaries. Although right now it's more of a synergy meta, I think uh, as soon as... Like the Elder Woods get readjusted as the as compositions get a little readjusted, like uh, people won't be going as wide, so they can go more tall. So definitely add in legendaries whenever you can. I still think uh, legendary soup at nine is playable. It is good. I have had success with it. So whenever you get that crazy opener that lets you go fast nine, put in legendaries. It's still worth it. Do it. Win the game. And that's it. Thank you for watching. And uh, when you wake up. You'll be a master. Congratulations.